How's it going guys? My name is Tavares and today I'm going to show you how just five minutes per week can save you thousands of dollars on car repairs. And the best part about it is you don't even have to get dirty. But I'm probably still going to get dirty somehow. So let's begin. The purpose of the video is not exactly uh, to show people what they already know. I know a lot of you are uh, car people, car enthusiasts, and uh, you probably know all this stuff. What I wanted to do is to get some information, some very, very useful information out to the general public, uh, to people like my parents. This is my uh, dad's 07 Range Rover. And I think that for people like him, five minutes can go a long, long way. So this isn't gonna require any sort of special tools. It is gonna require some tools, but uh, anything that you can get at your local AutoZone. But before we actually check tire pressure, we have to check what the pressure should be. So uh, if you open up your driver's side door, usually there's a little sticker right here, uh, right below the VIN plate or near the VIN plate, and uh, should tell you what the pressure should be uh, for the stock tire size. So here it's telling me that the front should be at 36 and the rear should be at 42. So we're gonna go by that. Now, I bought this fancy pants gauge from uh, Harbor Freight, but you don't have to buy something like this. This is like 20 bucks. You can just get away with uh, using something that's like two bucks at AutoZone. Uh, it's a little uh, pencil gauge, they call it. And all you do is take off this, this little stem cap. And it's the same procedure with uh, any tire pressure gauge. Just take this off and plug this in. So this tells me that I'm about 32 PSI. And uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. Since that said, uh, I should be around 36. We're a little low in these tires. Uh, I know that these tires are brand new, but it has been getting colder uh, and hotter, and there's been a lot of fluctuation in the, the temperature. And I know that tire pressures can vary when that's a factor. So uh, what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm just gonna go to the uh, gas station since I don't have an air pump here. I'm just gonna go to the gas station, fill these up to 36, fill the rears to 42, and that should be good. Also remember that if your car comes equipped with a spare tire, that also needs to have adequate air pressure. So uh, make sure you don't forget that. Another thing you should do while you're here is check the treads on the tires. Since you're gonna be uh, looking at the tires and uh, measuring the tire pressure, uh, make sure that the treads are all uniform. You don't want tread wear on the inside or outside of the tire uh, kind of ununiformly because that means that you have uh, some alignment issues. You maybe need alignment. Maybe you have a tie rod that's busted uh, or maybe the tire is overfilled with pressure. So uh, that is something you definitely have to take care of. This tire, well, these tires all around, they're brand new. I, uh, I replaced them when I came here last. So I know that they're good, but uh, if they were used tires, if they had a few thousand miles on them, then I would definitely check the tread. And uh, that is definitely part of the uh, five minute check. First thing you're gonna wanna do is you wanna locate your car's dipstick. Uh, mine is right here, it has this little yellow handle, and we're gonna take it out. And you wanna wipe it off first because that's gonna give you a false reading. I'm gonna put it back in, and the second reading is the one you want to take. And right here, it looks like the oil was changed recently. I don't know if you can get that on camera, but uh, it definitely looks like it's up to the level, and actually smells like a decent, a decent grade of oil. I can tell grades by just smell, everybody. So the next thing you wanna do is you want to check the coolant. You don't want to do this on a hot car. On a hot car, the coolant is going to be under pressure and you definitely don't want to check the coolant when it's under pressure because that's when it explodes in your face and you go to the hospital and you don't want that. Uh, but this car is actually quite cool. It's been uh, sitting for a few hours. So uh, we see, I, actually I can see that uh, this coolant is fine. It's at its uh, regular range level. Yeah, it doesn't seem, that there don't seem to be any uh, coolant leaks or or faults. So uh, we're gonna leave that alone for now. But uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check the power steering fluid. So on this car, the uh, power steering reservoir is right here. It's uh, this little yellow cap. And usually on most cars, there's a little dipstick here, but on this car, there isn't. So uh, all you have to do is look down below and uh, see that there's actually some fluid in there. And if there is, then you should be fine. Um, nothing is telling me about the quality of that fluid, but since my power steering fluid, uh, my power steering pump isn't actually making any noise, then I think it should be fine, at least for this cursory inspection. The next thing you wanna check is your windshield wiper reservoir, and that is denoted by this blue cap. That's, uh, it's usually a blue cap on every car. And uh, this is something that runs out really quickly. You can basically get it for a dollar a gallon, you can fill it up, uh, and you can use it as much as you want. So that's nothing to, to worry about. 
But what you wanna also do is do a cursory visual inspection. Make sure that you don't have any leaking fluids, uh, any leaking oil uh, around the valve covers. That's usually where it seeps. Uh, and make sure that you have uh, no power steering pump or power steering line leaks, um, and any oil leaks, any transmission fluid leaks. You'll notice it if you look under the car and you see uh, some, some puddles or, or whatnot that aren't normal. The only one that is normal is a water leak from your AC evaporator. And it's not leaking, that's, uh, that's just uh, part of its uh, regular process. So uh, this thing actually looks very good, uh, other than the fact that the hood struts don't work and I have to use uh, one of these uh, <laughs> one of these ice scrapers to, to keep this you know, hood up. But this is looking uh, really good, so let's move on to the next thing. All right, so we are behind the car and we are on the ground. I told you I was gonna get dirty today. And uh, what you wanna do is do a visual inspection underneath the car. And uh, this is just a quick once over, uh, just a quick glance at anything that's rusting or any bushings that are perished uh, because those are things that happen in cars. So on this car, this is a New Jersey car. Even though this was a basically rust-free car, you can see that there's a little bit of corrosion here on the muffler. Nothing too, too much, nothing uh, to worry about. But uh, I also can see that the air uh, suspension is actually in good shape. I can see that the bushings uh, aren't perished. Uh, nothing is, well, at least at first glance. I haven't put a tool uh, on them, but uh, they look to be fine. They don't look to be cracked. And everything down here looks to be in decent shape. And that's what you want. You want to catch any rust before it forms, or if you have any terminal rust, especially in stuff like the frame rails, then uh, that is something that you definitely want to catch beforehand because rust is not your friend. And uh, anytime that you see rust, uh, especially on the underside of a car, it is uh, basically a race against the clock. So uh, this is a very, very important step to do. The next thing you wanna do is make sure all your lights work. Now, this is a quite simple and basic step, but a lot of people don't do it. A lot of people don't actually know if their brake lights or headlights or uh, just clearance lights aren't working. And some cars, well, this car has notifications and it tells you if the lights aren't working, but a lot of cars don't. So what I do is uh, I just employ the use of a friend or a spouse or uh, somebody that can just tell you if lights are working but let's say you are a hermit. Let's say you don't have any friends at all. How do you do it? So you can employ the use of this. Everybody has it, it's a cell phone, and uh, you can just use the camera function, just put it on something behind your car and record you pressing the brake, doing the turn signals, and uh, turning on your clearance lights. And that will give you a really good idea of if you need to replace any bulbs or uh, any of your lights are out. So the last thing you wanna do is uh, basically give a, uh, a nice bounce to the suspension. Now this suspension is a little bit different because it's not a conventional strut and spring setup. This actually has an air spring, but the struts are basically the same as you get in any passenger car. So what you wanna do is a very, very low tech thing and you just wanna bounce. Oh. Gotta put some weight into it. Oh. There we go. Okay, so you wanna get a nice bounce going. Then you wanna measure how much the car moves. Now this car is a little bit different again. It has air suspension, but most cars, they're gonna to want to bounce one and a half times. They're gonna have one full rebound and then one half rebound. And uh, that means that the struts are working like they should. That is most cars, that's not sports cars, that's not cars like this, but I just wanted to show you guys what, uh, what that looks like and also embarrass myself a little bit. The reason why I implore you to do this five minute test is because I want you to uh, make sure you see problems before they happen. You wanna make sure that there's no rust in the car. You wanna make sure that your tires are wearing properly and they're, that they're inflated to the proper pressure. You wanna make sure that all your fluids are topped up. You don't need to have an ASC certification to do any of this. This is something that anybody with a garage or a driveway or even on the street can do. So uh, with that, you should be able to save a lot of money because you'll see problems coming down the road and you'll make sure that your car, you'll, you'll have a really good idea of what your car's doing as far as its engine performance and uh, its leaking fluids or stuff that needs to be repaired. If you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. You can hit that subscribe button or you can hit that little bell and next to the subscribe button and that makes you part of my notification squad. You guys get notifications as soon as they come out and uh, you guys get first dibs on my videos, especially ones like this that are general maintenance that are good for everybody. If you'd like to contact me, you can do so at the Real Tavares, that is Instagram and Twitter. 
facebook.com slash astavarish and astavarish at gmail.com is my email and uh, I do read every single one. But until next time, this is me telling you that on cars like this that don't actually have any modifications, but uh, you guys can still uh, get them into tip top running shape, you guys need to wrench every day.